ahead and prepare yourself to clean these oiled leather Birkenstocks. And my supplies are here. Now you don't need everything that I have here. I'm just giving you examples of what can be used. So the first thing that we're going to use when we're going through and cleaning is some of these tools here. So um, in your Birkenstock kit, you're going to get um, one of these brushes here. And so it has the brush with the nylon bristles and the metal bristles. We do not want to use this on the oiled leather straps. So we, we don't want to be using it here because it will scratch your finish. So we're not going to be using the brush on the outside of the uppers we may use it on the underside but not on the top but what we do want to use is going to be the nubuck block so that's going to be this part here and that's the part that it's like it's a chemical eraser but what it's going to do is it's going to help us to remove any oils or dirt on the surface of our leathers um, i also really really like to use like a medium to finer sandpaper um, like a 150, 120 grit is good. You don't want it to be too abrasive because then you'll end up leaving um, very prominent striation marks on the on the leathers. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're using something that's a little bit finer so that it has that smoother finish to it. And then the other thing that we can use too is um, what is called a crepe eraser. It's a textured rubber, similar to the Nubuck block. It's going to allow us to um, remove any stain spots, anything like that. Um, and then also, sometimes the edges of our leathers um, will get a little bit hard or sharp. Um, and if any of that is ever bothering you, a nail file seriously is going to be like your wonder tool. Um, and what you can do, a lot of times um, here on the, on the toe part, this strap here when you get a brand new pair of Birkenstocks can sometimes tend to dig in, um, kind of like cut your foot. If you just take a nail file to that, it's freaking amazing. So sandpaper, nail file, same, they're the same thing. Um, those are gonna be wondrous tools to use on your oiled leathers. Um, don't be afraid to use tools like this on your leather. It's not going to ruin them, okay? It's going to be a super helpful tool. So after we're all done cleaning the oiled leather straps dry using all these tools that we just talked about. Um, you're also then going to want to go in with like a leather lotion conditioner. The leather lotion and leather conditioner, those are going to help to kind of clean up and even out the color tone on the Birkenstocks. If you don't have that, that's totally fine. We can move on to the next uh, products that I have here, which are um, either the Four Seasons Weather Guard, the Birkenstock Water and Stain Repellent, and um, or petroleum jelly or Vaseline. Um, and what these three items are going to do is these three items are going to repel water from your leathers. The petroleum jelly and leather lotion, leather conditioner and leather oil, those items are also going to um, give you a different finish on your Birkenstocks. The petroleum jelly or the Vaseline is gonna give you that darker finish. Do not use petroleum jelly or Vaseline more than once a year on your Birkenstocks or on your leathers. And I have talked to a lot of leather workers and they agree. And it's just easy. We've been doing this for a really long time. We've been cleaning um, and restoring Birkenstocks for over 25 years. And this has been one of our go-to items. So trust me when I say that you can do it again, just use it in moderation. Um, but they, they do give that really deep, beautiful finish and they do help to, or it does help to repel the water. Um, leather lotion, leather oil, leather conditioner, these can be used all the time. If you wanted to do it on a monthly basis, you'd be totally fine. Cause again, these are items that are meant specifically or the leather lotion is meant specifically for your leathers. You do not want to use any oils that are meant for your food or your body. These have bases in them that can actually go rancid. So if you've ever opened like an old bottle of lotion and it smells or old cooking oil are not going to be what you want to use on your shoes because those are naturally based and they're going to make your, your leather smell rancid and you don't want that. Um, so nothing that goes on your skin or into your body are you going to use on your leathers, okay? You wanna use leather lotion, leather conditioner, or leather oil. If it says leather before the word, then you're good to use it. And when we're applying those, we're also gonna be using um, a cut up t-shirt. I think that works the best. It's the easiest um, material. It doesn't leave fuzzies behind or anything like that. So you'll wanna use your, um, like a cut up piece of t-shirt, handkerchief, uh, eyeglass cleaner, like the, like a cotton cloth. Um, those types of materials are good for applying the leather lotion and the petroleum jelly. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start cleaning. This is the ironed oiled leather. Leather. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning this. We're gonna start by unbuckling our straps. So first thing we want to do is get everything unbuckled. And the reason that we do this is one, obviously you want to clean your entire strap, not just the top, but also the underneath. 
and we want to get underneath the buckle here okay so oil feathers are gonna be a little bit different than our suede. my suede are super easy to clean because it's much softer um, the way that they process the leather the oil leather is a little bit stiffer so be patient <laughs> don't be afraid to you know get in here and do what you need to just please whatever you do um, don't like rip this open because then you'll separate see how here this this one's already started to separate we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open these overall I kind of want to I want to get all this evened out now this is just the natural process this is called burnishing this has just happened over time so what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of the burnishing that's happening here on the straps I'm just going to give this a completely brand new like facelift so let's go ahead and start with the uh, new butt block Okay, so we can start to see a little bit of a difference in the color so go ahead and use some sandpaper so that way you can see the difference between what my new buck block did and what the sandpaper is going to do again just those circular motions and you can see this has this has more striations to it than my new buck block did so you just this one you kind of got to go over a little bit more just because this is more abrasive don't be afraid though you you can't really super hurt your leather I mean unless you're going like crazy bananas um, and like just really really rubbing it don't don't go crazy but don't be afraid either pretty much anything that you do on here is gonna be fixable so no worries there. so you can see where I've crossed over from the um, new buck block to the sandpaper see how there's more striations here um, but if you have both items you can go in and you can finish this so it has a little bit less of the striation to it. And once we are all done doing this, the, my leather lotion, leather oil, leather conditioner, uh, the Vaseline, those are all going to help to smooth out these finishes as well. Uh, this is the, the crepe material I was telling you about. It is a little uh, textured rubber block. I'm gonna use it here. Um, in this in this area right here where the buckles are um, the buckles always tend to leave like dark marks so because this is a little bit more rigid um, I'm just gonna try it see what it does okay I actually have um, I have two lines here um, and two lines here so let's go ahead and do we'll do the crepe right here on this line we we'll do a little experiment see which one works better Or too bad you can see it started to lift up the line it's not really getting in there but look at what it did to all of the rest of the leather here like that's cool it really pulled up a lot of that oil Ooh, I like that that's nice there'll be a link to this down in the description so that way you can um, you can get some of this stuff on your own these really are not that expensive at all I right. well, got that up real nice Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my new buck block. Let's, again, we're just experimenting here so that way you can see all the differences. These rubber pieces on the Birkenstock cleaning brush are amazing. One, they get really, really well into the footbeds, like the crevices of the footbeds. But these are great for when you're trying to get rid of these, um, of these lines on your straps here. too fast for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and make sure you leave a comment below. Like the video if it's helpful. You can also message us at Instagram or Facebook and we'll go ahead and answer any questions that you might have. Let's keep watching.
underside of your straps, okay? So um, this is where you can use the brush. So the nylon brush with the metal bristles on the inside. This is what comes in your Birkenstock cleaning kit. Uh, we also have other versions of this brush on our website. If you don't want the whole Birkenstock cleaning kit, we have individual pieces as well. of your straps all clean. Cleaning the leathers and cleaning the footbed is very messy. It leaves a lot of debris. So you wanna make sure you have all of this done first prior to cleaning and sealing your cork because you don't want stuff getting stuck in the cork seal. And if you wanna see how I clean the footbed, if you go and you watch our suede video, I'll have a link for you. That video, we show you how to clean the footbed and how to reseal the cork. But for this video, we're just gonna go ahead and focus on these oiled leathers. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the petroleum jelly and leather lotion. I'll do petroleum jelly here and I'll do leather lotion at the toe. Um, so that way you can kind of see the difference and how they change the color of the leathers. So we're gonna use our lint-free cloth. You wanna make sure that you have something that isn't gonna leave a bunch of lint behind. Again, we're gonna go ahead and unbuckle these. And I'm gonna use the Vaseline from here back and I'm gonna use the leather lotion from here forward. Okay, so let's start with the Vaseline. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab, this is how I like to do it. Um, you have you have the, the cloth to be able to remove any excess, okay? So I said Vaseline on the back. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply this. You can apply it uh, directly to the cloth as well. Um, and that way it doesn't go on quite as thick or quite as heavy, okay? I like to just go for it. I love a like a deep, dark, rich color on my leathers. That is just me. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fade this forward, so that way we don't have like a like a really hard line of what's called demarcation. So you won't be able to see the huge contrast between the two. Okay. But obviously, as you can see here, this does get darker. Okay. Um, you can if you want to, if you want to do just a little bit and just make it look like it's burnished, um, you can go ahead and apply it just to the edges. Okay, just like this. You didn't even ever have to remove the burnishing if you didn't want to. I just wanted to give it a nice smooth, uh, brand new clean surface because again, these had been worn for a really long time. And so I wanted to just Give them a little bit more life, you know? Remove whatever has been on them for these couple of years. Because again, um, this is a used pair of Birkenstocks. So I went ahead and I added burnishing in here just so that way it has some dimension. I like the dimension. Let me just finish adding some here on the edges. So just a little bit of Vaseline and I'm gonna go right along the edge here. Smoosh is a technical term. <laughs> and the nice part is, is after all this is dried and you don't like the way that it came out, guess what we can do? We can just go ahead and redo it. We just take our sandpaper or our new buck block and we remove whatever we don't like. Like I feel like that was a little heavy right there. Ooh, but ooh, look at that. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking my thumb and I'm just, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure and that is blending that line that I created. I accidentally went a little too heavy there, but look at that. Oh, it's so nice. So if yours, when you purchase them were really light and you want them to be darker, oh, look at what I just did. Look at how great that looks. Okay. So the leathers are great because you have the ability to change however they look. If you want them lighter, you just sand them or use your new buck block. If you want them darker, then we just add some Vaseline or, or leather conditioner, leather oil. Um, mink oil is another really great one if you want it to be really dark. If you don't want it really dark, don't use mink oil. It's a much 
like richer, thicker, heavier oil that's gonna super saturate your, your leathers. It's used a lot on cowboy boots, but I love the way that that came out. So if yours started this light and you wanted them to be darker, look what I just did. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna move over to the leather lotion. This one, um, depending on the viscosity or the, um, the thickness of your liquid, um, will determine how, how you wanna do this. Uh, leather lotions are usually thicker. Leather conditioners are usually a little bit runnier. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead, uh, because this is a little bit harder for me to maintain on my finger, I'm gonna use the, uh, the t-shirt. This is what we use the t-shirt for, okay? So I'm just gonna get that all in there. And again, if you don't want your Burks to be this dark, then don't do what I'm doing, okay? Essentially what you would do is you would just only seal it with your water, um, water and stain repellent or your weather guard, something along those lines. And I will do that on the other shoe so you can see what that looks like, cleaned and lightened and then just protected. So I'm getting very similar results here. Now, what will be the difference is, is because this is wet um, and not the petroleum jelly, where the petroleum jelly is, it's it's just, it's Vaseline, right? So it's just going on there. It doesn't necessarily dry. Um, so the leather conditioner, after some time, we'll take another picture of this after it's all done so we can see what it looks like after it's had some time to process and dry, okay? Because it might not be this dark. That's something you also need to take into consideration. That what it looks like as soon as you put it on doesn't necessarily mean that that's what it's going to look like, um, you know, an hour or two later, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and darken the whole thing instead of doing the burnishing like I did before, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the leather lotion um, across the whole top here. So we'll have a few different things to look at. Experimenting is so much fun. I love like trying things out and seeing what can be done, especially because we know that we just did all this and we can totally undo it, okay? Look how pretty that is. The oiled leather is definitely one of my favorite colors. So pretty. I mean, the gray is just gorgeous. So, this one has been completely treated. Okay, this one here. So what I did, this is with complete Vaseline. So this has, this is just solid Vaseline here. Then this, this area doesn't really have a whole lot going on. Um, and then, um, and then what I did is I just went ahead and I added my own burnishing because let's say I had gotten the, that lighter pair. I want them darker. This is the look that I want to do. Um, this is with the leather conditioner. So um, I went ahead and I did it solid here. I missed a spot there. Um, and I did it solid here. Now this is still wet. So we're gonna, I'm gonna finish this and we'll come back and take a look at that and see what that looks like all done. notice that or not but um, after you've done all of this and or even when you have a brand new pair of oiled other Birkenstocks they will scratch which I think adds to the character of your Birks um, but if you were to just run your finger across there you see how it gets lighter because all we've done is we have just we have just processed the surface of the leather so over time, this will like scratch and get really, really cool looking, have a lot of character and, a, and an aged look to it, which is awesome. If you don't want that, then Burko Floor would be a great option, which um, we have a video on how to clean your Burko Floor Birkenstocks as well. That's the synthetic leathers. Um, if you wanna take a look at that, there's gonna be a link right here for you or down below. excess with the Vaseline. You don't want to have it just sitting there because um, that will then collect funk and all that kind of stuff. So you just want to make sure that you use the t-shirt to buff it into the leathers essentially. All right. So now we'll 
will go ahead and we will let this dry for a bit. Okay, so we're going to be using two different water and stain repellents. So I have the Birkenstock water and stain repellent and the WeatherGuard water and stain repellent. I'm gonna use the Birkenstock water and stain repellent on the front and I will do the other one on the back. We'll see if there's a difference. minutes and we'll see if there is any type of a difference I doubt it but we're gonna see um, and we will be back okay so a couple of hours have gone by and there is a slight difference between um, the front of the shoe and um, the back or the front of the strap and the back of the strap so you can see that there is just it is just a little bit darker in the front there's this line right here where I had the paper towel um, so this line here, this front part was the Birkenstock water and stain repellent. And then the back is where I used the weather guard. There's a little bit of a difference and that's because this is a heavier mist than the aerosol. So it is gonna make it just a little bit darker. But I mean, other than that, they're completely protected. I think what I'll do is just to kind of um, even things out, I will go ahead and apply this to the rest of it. Um, but you can you can tell that there's a little bit of a difference. Like even when you're looking at just the just the top of the, of the straps here, you can see that this one is darker and this one is lighter. And I went through the same process as far as cleaning it. Um, but then when it came to the spraying the protector on there, there is a slight difference. So this is something to keep in mind when you are purchasing a water and stain repellent. Um, not that either one is better than the other, it's just what your results are going to look like. If you want to maintain the lighter color, then you're going to want to use the aerosol, which is um, what we sprayed on this strap here. And then um, if you are okay with the darker color, um, then definitely go ahead and go with this. The other thing too is you can miss this a lot lighter from further away. Um, I was, I was kind of close on it and I did spray quite a bit. Um, so. I mean, that makes it, that makes a difference as well. Um, but again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just a matter of, a, of um, your taste in the color that you want on your Birkenstock. this was helpful and that you learned a lot if you did make sure that you subscribe hit the notification bell so that way you know when our next videos come out and if you have any questions or comments please leave those in the comment section below everything that I used in the video is down in the description and I look forward to seeing you guys soon